One look at Javier Bardem, and it's safe to say he was born to play a Bond villain. She sent you up to me, know when you're not ready, know when you would likely die. Mommy was very bad. He's gone to the dark side before as well. Of course, the psychopathic hitman with a haircut modeled after a mixing bowl in No Country for Old Men. Call it. Javier, by the way, won an Oscar for that, the first Spaniard to do so. It is his stunning range as an actor, though, that's landed him in films by the likes of Michael Mann and Woody Allen. What color are your eyes? They're blue. Javier, who's now married to Penelope Cruz right there, comes from a family of actors whose strong political views at times landed them in trouble with the Franco dictatorship. And Javier has inherited his family's appetite for principle. His latest project is a really cool film, I loved it, called The Sons of the Clouds, The Last Colony. It's about the Sahrawi people of the Western Sahara, a culture caught in a territorial dispute that's lasted for three decades. It's a humanitarian crisis that's been largely ignored. And that's something Javier wants to change. The people of the Western Sahara must be allowed to speak. Everybody, free for the program. Javier Bardem. Good to see you, guys. How are you? Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations on the film. It's, it's, Thank you. It's, it's quite a story. It's amazing that there are lots of stories in the world that people ignore. This is just one that a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, there are many. <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so obviously, I mean, you were born not too far from the region, and obviously Spain has a close connection to it. But tell me uh, you know, about this story for people who don't know. Yeah. Basically, Spain had a colony in the Sahara, and then when Franco died in 74, we let them down, and we we just let these people on the desert by their own, and let Morocco take place of their land. And since 37 years ago, we are not taking care of our own people there. They were Spaniards, and what happened now is that Morocco divided the place in two: the occupied territory where they are abusing human rights, uh, basic human rights, violating those basic human rights and 250,000 people are living in refugee camps in the Western Sahara, um, close to the southwest of Argelia, Ar 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 Argelia? Ar 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 Algeria. Ar Algeria, yeah. thank yeah, yeah. you. Uh, in the worst conditions that you can imagine, for example, 50 degrees on shade. Uh, so they are making, they are surviving through the help of organizations and uh, uh, NGOs. But basically what they are demanding since 37 years ago is their right to come back to their own land. And since Morocco is a very strong ally of uh, United States, France, and Spain, uh, there's this status quo for so many years that are making these people die in silence in the middle of nowhere. What was notable, uh, the absence in this film was Kofi Annan. Uh, mm -hmm. the, but, and normally we just think, well, maybe he's busy, but in this film there's this really interesting shot <laughs> of you standing next to the Kofi Annan picture. Yeah. Is this... A, is this a failure on his part? I mean, I think it's a failure in everybody's part, uh, coming from uh, all these people that are trying to to come to a, a solution. But basically, it, it's about, for example, when, when, when we were in the United Nations and we were talking to the ambassadors of the United States and France, uh, the French ambassador said to me, off the record, he said, yeah, Morocco for us is like the girlfriend that we don't want to have but we have to sleep with her every night, which is a weird thing to say. Very weird. Very, like, you, you and why don't you sleep with somebody that you don't like? <laughs> Basically, what he's saying is we have to defend them no matter what. And no matter what means violation of human rights, right. raping, uh, killing, uh, imprisoning. I mean, that, a country that says liberté, fraternité, égalité, shouldn't be able to do it. Right. And, uh, but again, the world is the way it is. And, well, and, and, and what we're trying with these documentaries, this little drain in the desert, yeah. to bring some attention to something that is not very well known. Everything is in a way political, and all choices are in a sense political, but not everybody and everything is an activist. Do you identify on any level as an activist? No, I, no. I, I identify myself as somebody that wants to uh, give a hand in the way he can, but I think we all do. I mean, well, privately friend. or publicly, I mean, we all do. I mean, we have friends and family and people that we do care and they need our help and we help them. And uh, in this case, 
uh, as a Spaniard, is a very strong motivation because we we have this moral and historical uh, responsibility with them. How much is it? You, I mean, you you've got a family of political filmmakers in some sense. Yeah. Right. Had a big influence on you as a kid. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, my uncle was a, a great uh, film director. Can you have a picture of, of you of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my uncle. That's my mommy. <laughs> Uh, but she made films of, with messages as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in prison for many years with Franco uh, for movies that he did. And actually, he finished one of his movies from the jail. Was yeah. it kind of like a hero for you, in a sense? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, he, he was a very strong uh, person with strong ideals. And in, I mean, we are now uh, more allowed to express ourselves in freedom. But there are countries where they are not. and. Spain was one of those in that time. So, as a filmmaker, to go there and try to explain something that is that has to do with our society was a crime. And my mother, which is behind, also. I mean, she's been pursued and she's been chased and she's been because she was an actress and she was an activist and she was. So it's not something that you do because you have to. It's something that you do because you don't know to do something else. Right. <laughs> I don't know. But did they, you know, parents and family give kids lessons. They say, look, it's important to, to be to about, care. yeah, and to be about other people, especially in this world, because you've got this, so much fame and profile, and yes. you have a high-profile relationship. You have all this stuff going on around you that it can be bright and noisy. Yeah, but as long as you are aware that that's noisy and bright, <laughs> you're okay. Uh, as long as you don't think that that's reality, yeah. it's reality in a sense that you live in that reality, so it's real. You can touch it. Right. But that's not a real world. Also, we are not in the real world. What is the real world? I don't know. The world is really a very mess place. Dude, we're in the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, we are in the Matrix. Is, exactly. We are. <laughs> well. Stick around more with Javier Bardem after this. <laughs> All right, coming up. Cool. We'll talk to Javier about power and the scariest haircut ever. I need you to step out of the cars. Plus the very funny Chris Gibbs in the Three Things panel. We're talking about the end of innocence and ignorance and the things that we're happy not to know. Like, what my cat is thinking. I'm pretty much sure that my cat is thinking how delicious I would be once I die. Jesus, that's like no country for a man yeah. in America. Imagine having my damn. If you and your mom. <laughs> but, but it's a short film that I did with my mom, but my, uh, uh, my uh, cousin directed. Cousin, the son of this it's man that we talked before. La Madre. Uh, La Madre. It's called The Mother, and I'm trying to kill her. You are? Yeah. But well, you have the exact same haircut in that that you had in No Country for Old exactly. Men. Right? Well, that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> you know what's interesting about you is that, I mean, you could very easily be cast as a guy that holds a gun and becomes an action guy, but with the exception of No Country and maybe one other thing, you don't do a lot of that. Is that a conscious choice? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I guess No Country and the haircut of No Country makes some impression in some people, <laughs> and they think that that's all I can do. Uh, and actually, it's true. That's all I can do, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry to let you down. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I try to do different things, different roles, but uh, also it doesn't depend on me. I mean, right. it depends on what they, ch they, they offer, you know? But uh, I, like, I, I like to at least try to change the perspective of, of uh, as an actor and do different things that take me to different places. That's... Well, so you're working with Ridley Scott now, right? Yeah. In the middle of a film? Yeah. I mean, tragedy with, his, with Tony Scott, obviously, but what, what's his experience been like? Amazing. Uh, he's, the other day I was telling someone that I was in the... The other day? No, yesterday. <laughs> and uh, he was shooting, and I saw him putting the cameras and telling to the DP how he wants to shoot, and it's... it's I felt so privileged of being close to him in that moment. Like, he's one of the greatest directors ever, and he's a sweetheart. And uh, and we're working on this movie that I think is going to be, I don't know, hopefully a good one. Uh, but beyond that, the experience of me of me being with him, it's amazing. Uh, I, I I am very lucky to do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in a sense, you can stretch that part of you making a film like that, mm -hmm. and then with the documentary you can stretch another part of you. Is it, is it all about trying to have some complete version of a life? <laughs> well, that's a good way to put it. Uh, 
uh, I, I don't think about it. It's something that comes out naturally, and you go with it, and and it happens. Uh, it's not. I don't. I don't. I don't go that mental in uh, making decisions. I can't. There's, there, you've talked about it, and others have talked about it. When you're playing a film and you're doing a dramatic role, there will be an emotional toll over time that you'll take it home with you. Mm -hmm. Is the same true for a film like this? Well, this, this film took us four years to put it together because it didn't depend on us. It depended on many people talking, and we tried to have uh, an objective version of it. I think what I think, but the movie should think by itself. Yeah. Uh, and that was very, very difficult. We, we, we tried to pursue, I mean, we pursue, <laughs> we chase every Moroccan authority possible. Then none are in this. No, 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 yeah, no, no. At the no. end of the film, they li you gotta stay to the very end because it lists all the people who turned down an exactly. interview. Exactly. And uh, which, in a way, it's in a statement by itself yeah. because they don't want to talk because they know that they cannot defend their situation, their position in it. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it, 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 it took us four years where we all did our many things that we had to do in the meantime, but it stays with you and, and it's a different than playing a role. In this, in this case, do you know that you are kind of uh, the speaker of many other people that really need a voice? I mean, you don't think that high of yourself, but you just try to help in any way. Right. And that's way more important and way more, uh, yeah, important than doing any, any role in any movie. For sure. Sons of the Clouds, you've got to see it, The Last Colony. Javier Bardem, everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.